Welcome everyone, this is my beginner's airbrush tutorial. It goes along with my master grade airbrush painting tutorials and if you haven't already then please take a look at my playlist. You'll see I have an intro video to this um, explaining the sort of whole concept and what I plan to do with this beginner's series and indeed uh, you can also have a look at my master grade airbrush painting series at the same time. In these first few videos I'm going to talk about some pretty basic and perhaps boring things. Now, please bear with me, I'm going to get progressively more in-depth in terms of uh, the whole airbrush setup, airbrush accessories, paints, and compressors, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, if you're purely interested in the painting side of things, like I say, head over to my Master Grade Synergy Guide, and you'll see more of, uh, more of this kind of thing here. I'm probably going to keep this intro for the first few parts, so if you're watching next time then please feel free to fast forward to this point. OK, let's move on. Today I'm going to talk about how I mix my own paints uh, for my models and also how I use the dropper bottles uh, for ease of use. And really, uh, I originally got this idea from the Vallejo series and their bottles come like this, uh, you open it up and for those of you who don't know you get a dropper design and that allows you some really fine control, you know you can have one drop, two drops or just keep squeezing for more and you know these are by far the easiest that I find you know for those of you who no doubt used to the Tamiya or the uh, Games Workshop or you know over in Europe we have Humbrol then these are great for uh, you know if you're a paintbrush uh, painter and whatnot but if you're an airbrusher or uh, you know just to, well to be honest uh, it's just a pain in the ass to use and to keep these clean all the time is uh, is uh, quite annoying so just want to show you this um, this is the model air series and the reason why I'm showing you this is because these paints tend to be a lot thinner because they're meant for airbrushing and the other reason why I have my own dropper bottles is because I pretty much exclusively airbrush and I like to keep my uh, paints thinned down. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to achieve this effect. And if you look, then the bottom's the pigment and uh, it separates out quite easily. But, you know, if you look how thin this paint is, it just literally takes a few shakes and uh, it's already starting to get there. So that gives you an idea on how thin this paint is. And the reason why I'm showing you that is because I just want to get across the uh, the kind of consistency that you would want when mixing up your own paints. So um, let's get on to uh, you know that's all well and good when you can actually find these things, but uh, I don't normally I don't normally stick to using these, so I decided to just go ahead and make my own. And for that, what you're going to need is. Uh, well, these are, let me just zoom out a little bit for you guys, I'll move the camera back. These are meant for uh, tattoo ink, I think, um, but they come in these 30mm uh, sizes, so straight away it's pretty much double the size of any of these, so it's a lot more convenient. And you get this, which is the 30mm uh, the container part with a screw thread. You also get an insert to that, which looks like this, so you put your paint in, obviously, and that goes in like that, and that gives you your dropper design. Uh, I'm not going to squeeze it in just now, because uh, uh, they're quite hard to get out, but I'll show you that when I mix up some paint in a bit. And obviously, once the, uh, once the dropper is inserted, then this just forms a tight seal around it. And indeed, if you didn't want to use the dropper for whatever reason, then you could just use it plain as is. So that's that's where you see me using a lot of my own paints. Um, you know, just to grab the closest thing I have available. You know, I have a a lot of these all ready mixed up, and you'll see these in my uh, uh, various airbrush videos with the Sananju and uh, and whatnot. But as you can see, they're really clean and tidy. The caps themselves contain uh, you know the very tip of the paint and really uh, this for me is the easiest way to uh, you know pre-mix your colors for uh, for airbrushing and once again I was getting across that consistency you can see 
this is an odd one actually, I have this as my black highlight, so this is the post shading for any black parts I do. Uh, you know, uh, I prime it black first and I'll, uh, I'll tend to post shade it with a colour that's slightly lighter, but you know, if I shake this up you'll see that these will start to uh, mix together. Uh, as hopefully you can see there. So I do that with all my colours and it just means that when, you, when you're airbrushing then you can have an infinite amount of colours because all you really need is uh, your base colour and then you need a white and a black and you just mix them around until you get what you want. So that's the explanation and the next part I'll just show you I'll just show you uh, me mixing one of these uh, live as it were.